Hello everyone, Fabio back here once again with uh, part four of Q&A number eight. Uh, first of all, before we get into this, I just want to wish everybody a happy Easter. I hope that you enjoyed your day uh, with whatever you did, and hopefully the Easter Bunny brought you some, some treats, some good treats today. Um, before we get into the questions, I actually forgot one from Miss Junie B Films, which was, which question was it? Um, he, uh, they asked, I don't know, they asked, um, did you know that the U.S. is ranked number 89 in the world's dumbest countries? Only 89? It's hard to believe. Um, I, I see where that number would be because obviously populations and, and that kind of thing and, and the logistics and everything like that, but you know, yeah, America's uh, America's pretty stupid. Um, there are a lot of pretty stupid people in America. That's why. Um, but there are stupid people all over the world. It doesn't matter if they're American or Italian or Chinese or British or Indian, whatever we're talking about here. Um, you know, there's stupid people all over the world. So it is what it is. Um, so, yeah, I forgot that question, but included in here now. Um, I did get some questions that people sent in uh, after I started recording, but that's okay. So I have seven questions from Tony Robinson. Um, number one, are you interested in reviewing the Power Rangers comics? Yeah, um, I would like to go back and do Hamilton Comics was the original. I have some of those. I'd like to, to review some of those comics because I do have some and they're fun to read. Marvel took over after that. I'd like to read some of those. And then that was kind of it. Um, they did one Zio comic from Image, and then they lost the license or something like that. Uh, they were also supposed to do a Beetleborgs comic, and it never happened. Um, they did a... Uh, Saban did a couple through Acclaim, some for Turbo, and, and uh, you know, I'd like to review those. And then, of course, the, uh, the ones done through Boom Studios. But yeah, one day... I would like to review uh, the Power Ranger comic book stuff. There's a lot of really cool stuff in there. Uh, the second question is, what are your top five Power Ranger seasons? Uh, Mighty Morphin is definitely number one. Mighty Morphin season two. And then I would say Space, Time Force, Zeo, Turbo. Uh, those would be my top five seasons. Um, number six, uh, what sixth Rangers had the best debut to you? Tommy, obviously, is both the Green Ranger and the White Ranger I thought were great. I loved the uh, the Gold Ranger from Zeo, uh, both Trey and then when Jason came in. Uh, I liked the Phantom Ranger. Zane's was good. The Magna Defender was cool because I liked how he was an anti-hero first and then he became, uh, you know, one member of the team. I liked the Six Ranger, the Quantum Ranger... Uh, Merrick, and that that was it. I think that was all the and a cam I liked, and then that was it for like the six Rangers. I think after Ninja Storm, it went to uh, five Rangers for or less than five Rangers for quite a while because um, Dino Thunder was five. SPD, no, SPD went back to five. I like Doggy, so there, there's a bunch. Um, those, all the ones that I mentioned are my favorites. Or had the best debut. Uh, it's hard to pick the best. They were all good, but it, it's really hard to pick the best. Number four, have you thought about reviewing comedy movies? Yeah. You know, there's some movie comedy films that I would like to review. I know I've done a few here and there, but some more. Like, I, I know a lot of people... Oh, sorry, long day. Well, a lot of people have asked me about doing like Adam Sandler videos and stuff like that. I'll, I'll get to it eventually. Um, number five, uh, do you want to see buddy cop comedies come back? It would be nice. I do miss those kind of movies. It would be nice if those movies were to make kind of a comeback. Um, number six, if you could come up with an idea for a Power Ranger season... What would be your pitch? I would have, you know, kind of in a perfect world type scenario, I would have a lot of the older Rangers come back and kind of 
team up together, you know, maybe start two different teams of Power Rangers featuring older Rangers and have them tackle different parts of the world fighting evil. And then towards the end, kind of come together for like the final showdown. That would be my idea. Maybe have like Tommy lead one team and Jason lead the other team. I think that would be an interesting concept. And then the last question from Tony Robinson is, are there any new Power Ranger commentators that you are interested in collaborating with? No, I don't really do collaborations unless it's with like John or Rambo Raff or those kind of guys. You know, that's that's the only kind of collaboration I look forward to doing. So thank you, Tony, for sending in your questions. Next up, I have 10 questions from Turbo Tech War. Um, number one, have you heard of Li uh, Liddy Denier? No, let's uh, look this up quickly. Nope. She's an actress, but I don't know. I don't know anything about her. Um, what about Dean Cochran? Um, Dean, number two. Dean Cochran was, uh, isn't he the dude that, um, didn't he marry Leanne Rimes or something? Or no, that was Eddie, Eddie something. Yeah. Dean Cochran was, oh God, yeah, I know him. He was in this horrible movie called Shark Zone with John just reviewed. I remember what, I remember having that on DVD at one point. Yeah, I've heard of this guy. He was in that. He was in, apparently he was in Batman and Robin. He was in Phone Booth. He had a small part in The Cutter with Chuck Norris. I do remember that. He was like Chuck Norris's lawyer or something. Yeah, I remember this guy, Dean Cochran. Yeah, he was in a couple, couple movies. Who did he play in, um, in Batman and Robin? Oh, he was a motorcycle gang member. Okay. He was in an episode of Mortal Kombat Conquest. Oh, yeah. He was in A Dangerous Place with T.J. Roberts. He was his older brother that got killed at the beginning of the movie. That's right. Okay. Yeah, I remember. I remember him. Yeah. Um, number three. Have you seen Seven Seconds with Wesley Snipes? I think a long time ago I did. Uh, right before I got in the Army when I still had uh, the DVDs from Netflix... I was in the midst of watching through Wesley Snipes movies that I haven't seen yet and Seven Seconds. I saw it and I remember not liking it. A lot of those direct-to-video Wesley Snipes movies I didn't like. I think the only ones I actually enjoyed enough to purchase them was The Art of War 2, which I didn't think was too bad. And the other one was The Marksman, which I didn't think was that bad either. Um, although, uh, the thing about... Wesley Snipes directed DVD movies. They're very much like the Seagal ones. Uh, for some reason, Wesley Snipes uses a lot of body doubles. Um, there's, I, I think, the voice dubbing as well, like with the Seagal films. Um, but yeah, I remember watching quite a few of those, like Seven Seconds and Unstoppable, and uh, one's called, I think, The Contractor or something like that. And... It was pretty much, this again, the same thing as the Steven Seagal ones where Wesley kind of just showed up for a couple of days, filmed the scenes, and fucked off. Like, that's kind of the gist that I got from those movies. Um, number four, have you ever experienced Mandela Effect? No, I think the Mandela Effect is bullshit. It's funny because I swear, every time I do one of these Q&A videos... Um, someone always asks that question. I, 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 the past couple, excuse me, the past couple, someone has always asked that question. I know. Um, no, I think the Mandela effect is, <coughs> excuse me, um, is bullshit. I think it's just some made up thing that, that people have put in their heads to kind of just, you know, create whatever, in my opinion, like the whole thing with, um, with Sinbad, where people were like, oh, I swore he was in this genie movie. No, that was a, 
it was a prank that was done for funny or die, and it got blown way out of way out of proportion. Sinbad never made a genie movie back in the day, and Sinbad even said, "Like guys, like just stop. Like this was just a video, a prank video that we made, a, a parody video that we made for funny or die, and it got blown way out of proportion." Um, just like. You know, the Berenstein Bears thing. Well, no, it's Berenstein Bears. No, when I was growing up, it was always pronounced whether it was in school or we were watching the cartoon. It was always pronounced Berenstein Bears. I don't know why all of a sudden they want to change it. So I've never experienced it. I think it's bullshit. I think, again, it's, uh, it's just some made-up fucking thing that people put in their heads to feel good about God knows what, to, to have some kind of purpose, to have some kind of a, a conversation with whoever about whatever, just to, just cause, in my opinion, like, that's really annoying, and I get tired of hearing it, I really do, it's like, come on again, really with this? Um, number five, thoughts on Tracy Lords. Um, I've, you know, heard she's a very nice person and stuff, I mean, I don't agree with what she did, you know, to be honest, lying about your age, appearing in, you know, pornographic movies underage, and then, you know, kind of destroying that time in the business or whatever, you know, that's not really something I agree with, you know, a little shady, but I mean, you know, she kind of, she's acknowledged it multiple times, you know, she was like, Nobody forced me to do it. You know, it's something I did. It's something I felt I needed to do. And, you know, again, I don't agree with that. But, you know, she, I know she has since turned, you know, kind of got away from that. And, uh, you know, she's acted in several movies. She was in Blade. She was in Cry Baby. You know, she had a couple of starring movies, you know, B movies. But she, she had some movies. Uh, she was a musician for a while. She's written a book and, you know, she's become very successful. And, um, you know, I've heard from conventions and stuff. She's a, she's a very nice lady and everything. And to be honest, I wouldn't mind meeting her. You know, I like some of the movies that she's been in and stuff. Again, I don't agree what she did to the porn industry because it's kind of fucked up, but you know, it is what it is. Excuse me. All right, next question. Um, number six, do you think Menahem Golan got a lot of crap from Unhollywood? Yeah. Um, I, the documentary, the only canon documentary I've seen is uh, The Electric Boogaloo. There's another one. I think it's called The Go-Go Boys or something like that. That I would like to see because Canon Films, I think, was a very interesting company. Um, and I know a lot of people, especially in that documentary, shitted on their movies. People still shit on those movies. But a lot of those movies were very fun and very entertaining. You know, the Charles Bronson movies. He did, you know, Death Wish 2, 3, and 4, which I think are the, the best ones in the series. I like one and five, but the middle ones, I think, are, are the best ones. You know, Chuck Norris made a bunch of movies there, which I enjoy. I love Cobra and Over the Top, which were great Stallone movies. Um, you know, Van Damme got his start there with Bloodsport and a couple of other films. American Ninja, you know, Michael Dudikoff. You know, there's a bunch of canon films that I enjoy. And, you know, I think Menahem Golan and Yoram Globus get a lot of shit from people, you know, these guys, um, were two Israelites, you know, two Israel, Israeli guys that had a dream, they wanted to make movies, they wanted to make American, <clears throat> excuse me, <coughs> God, American movies, and, you know, have the American dream, and there's nothing wrong with that, um, you know, I think <clears throat> that documentary portrayed them kind of unflattering, you know, and I, I don't agree with a lot of the things that people said in that. And, you know, if it, and it's like, if it was really that bad, like, why would you talk about it in the first place? Why would you be in a documentary about it? And a lot of the people in that documentary, I don't care about. Like, Michael Dudikoff was in that documentary. 
for like 30 seconds. The only thing that I remember him saying in that documentary is they wanted me to play Spider-Man and it never happened. That was it. You know, you know, a lot of these Michael Duda call, like the American Ninja movies have features with him. So it's cool to hear him talk about those movies. But, you know, I would like to see him just do more like that. You know, Chuck Norris. Why was <clears throat> Chuck Norris not in that documentary? Why was Van Damme, like, not in that doc? You know, it's, it's, I would rather hear, you know, Charles Bronson passed away. You know, we'll never be able to hear from that. But I don't know. Like, it just, that documentary, there were parts about it that I liked. But it just seemed like most of those people in that documentary were bitter about those movies. But whatever. But yeah, I think Menahem gets a lot. And, and again, Urim Globus as well. <laughs> I think they get a lot of shit for no reason. Uh, <clears throat> God damn, I'm so sorry. Um, number seven, is David Lynch overrated? No, I think some of the movies that he's <coughs> done are overrated, but I don't think himself is overrated. Um, there's been some of his movies that I have enjoyed and Twin Peaks, but... Sorry, um... But I don't think David Lynch himself is overrated. Again, some of his movies are, but, you know, I don't, again, I don't think as a director he's overrated. All right, number eight. Have you heard of Takashi Kitano? No, let's look him up quickly. <sighs> If I could spell, that'd be great. Um, I've heard of some of these movies like Sonatine and Zyta the 2003 Zaitachi. So I have, okay, I do know who he is. Again, I've, I've heard of, of Brother, okay. John, he's in Johnny Mnemonic, Battle Royale. Okay, yeah, I know this guy. I just have never seen any of his movies. So I do know of him. But um, number nine, I heard you complaining about the Karate Kid remake recently. Um, did you know that they plagiarized a joke from Mean Girls? about that scene on the plane where Jaden Smith attempts to speak Chinese to an Asian passenger in which the passenger says, Dude, I'm from Detroit. No, I didn't realize they stole that joke, but what a surprise. You know, not not surprised there in the slightest. And the last question is, uh, speaking of Lindsay Lohan, whatever happened to her? Last time I heard she was, uh, she was harassing refugees on the streets somewhere in Europe trying to steal their kid. Yeah, she was severely intoxicated and she was making a live video about these refugees and um you know everything about that and was trying to like go over and and i think at, at one point um she grabbed one of the kids or something like that and the dad or the mom intervened and like assaulted her and she freaked out about it and she was questioned by police and everything yeah ever since then i don't know what happened you know Lindsay lohan um spiraled off the deep end very quickly and very hard and um hasn't been worth a shit in forever and you know i was i was a uh, excuse me a fan of hers growing up because i thought she was very cute and you know, I like some of the stuff she did. I like Parent Trap and some of the other movies that she was in as a kid. And, you know, she just got sucked into that, that Hollywood lifestyle. The the glitz and the glamour and the drugs and the partying and the clubs and everything. And she made a fool of herself and let herself go really bad. And, you know, and uh, whatever happened, happened. Ever, ever since then, I think that incident was about two, three years ago. Um, ever since then, I have not heard anything about her, so I have no idea. But yeah, but thank you TurboTech for sending in those questions. Moving on now to the actual 
uh, sheets here. Uh, I've got three questions from Harvey Pliskin. Um, first up, if you were able to redo the WWF WCW invasion all over again, how would you book it, and what are some dream matches you'd like to see? Example, Undertaker versus Sting, Stone Cold versus Hulk Hogan. Yeah, um, that was a gigantic clusterfuck. I think everyone knows that. Um, you know, it was definitely something that looked good on paper. Excuse me a second. Grab a pen here. Um, yeah, it was something that was definitely looked better on paper. Because, you know, you think, cool, I've got all this talent. I've got all these guys from both companies. You know, what can we do here to take advantage of this? And all it ended up being was Vince McMahon sticking his thumb in the eye of WCW you know, just once again to prove his point that, hey, I won, you know, and that's all it was. What was really stupid about that was this, um, you know, they portrayed pretty, you know, any non-WWF wrestler as a, as a heel. You know, all the WWF wrestlers were baby faces with the exception of Stone Cold Steve Austin because he was still doing his nice Stone Cold Steve Austin gimmick at the time, which I love that. And then, you know, he went over to the WCW side, but at the end he turned babyface and joined back up. You know, that was like the only... <laughs> there we go. Um, that was just, you know, the, the tip of the iceberg with, with that is they treated every wrestler that didn't work for Vince prior to that as, as a... a uh, as a heel and you had, you know, you had talent there. Like there was potential to do something worthwhile. Um, a lot of those guys, particularly the WCW guys just were wasted and they wrestled on the B shows. They wrestled on Sunday night heat and velocity and dark matches. And that was it. You know, Mike awesome, I think had like two matches he came in, he won the hardcore title, and then he had the opening match on the Invasion pay-per-view and a tag with Lance Storm, and I think that was it, you know. Um, especially guys that, like, Booker T, when WCW ended, was the top babyface. He was the world and the United States champion at the time. As soon as he showed up in WWF, he was treated like public enemy number one. It was so stupid how they booked that, and, you know... Um, just a gigantic clusterfuck. There was, again, there was potential to do something that could have been a lot better. It was, it was a waste of, that started in what, June, July of 2001, July 2001, June 2001. So they wasted pretty much six months of TV time on a stupid invasion angle, which should have been a lot better. Um... And really, the biggest star to come out of that was Rob Van Dam. I mean, Booker T had success in WWF. Um, but him and Rob Van Dam were really the biggest stars. None of the ECW guys really had success. You know, Tommy Dreamer, Taz, none of those guys. And if you really think about it, all the other WCW guys really didn't have success either. Um... Booker T, you know, went on to become Intercontinental Tag Champion, World Heavyweight Champion, Rob Van Dam, same thing. That was it. Everyone else, you know, DDP had a little bit of success, but he got hurt. He screwed his neck up really bad, and then he left the company. Um, and I think there was also some behind-the-scenes stuff going on. I know DDP has gone on the record and said that as well <laughs> as to why he never had a bigger run there. Um, but most of those guys didn't, you know, and I know I've, I kind of went off on a spiel here, but if I were, if I, <clears throat> if I could redo it in a perfect world, you know, I would have, you know, the WCW guys just kind of show up and start wrestling and, you know, people are like, well, wait a minute, who are, who are these guys and where'd they come from? And then have 
whoever the top heel was at the time, which would probably would have been Scott Steiner, um, you know, come in and, and say, we've declared war and this and that. And then I would have the WCW baby faces be like, wait a minute, you know, this, no, we're not here. We just want to, we want a chance to show the WWF fans what we can do. You know, we're not WCW guys. We want to be treated as equals, you know, and then I would have, yeah, you know, just some heel guys and then some baby faces and then maybe have some people flip flop in and out and the WWF guys will be like, cool, you know, you want to wrestle here, great, but you got to work your way up, you got to earn your respect, and just do it like that. Make it kind of a, like a respect honor thing. And then, yeah, have, you know, Sting come out as a baby face and, you know, point to The Undertaker and says, you know, I just, I want you. People have been talking about it for years. Let's do it. Let's make this happen. And they could have, him and, Sting and Undertaker could have wrestled for years, you know. Yeah, and then have you know a, a, a I think a great storyline would be have a guy like Hulk Hogan or Bret Hart come in, you know, big time WWF stars, and it's like, well, whose side are you on? You know, and I think Hogan it would have been cool, like you know, like they did with the NWO, maybe stick to WCW. And then the fans just start cheering his name and then he switches over like he did. Or, you know, same with Bret Hart. I think it would have been great, you know, if Bret Hart had not got injured. Bret Hart come in, you know, are you on Team WWF or Team WCW? Well, I'm on Team WWF. You guys treated me like shit. Never gave me a chance. Fuck you. I'm on Team WWF. Like, that kind of stuff would have been cool. And... Yeah, you know, have Hogan wrestle Stone Cold Steve Austin when they were both still in their primes, basically. Um, why that match <clears throat> never happened is beyond me. It was it was it was pol politics, politics. That's not a word. <clears throat> it was politics, you know, which got in the way, and that's why we never saw it. And yeah, you know, just make it more like sense, not. Oh, WCW is evil and get away and, you know, all that. Like, that was so dumb. And definitely <clears throat> don't have Stephanie McMahon and Shane McMahon as the owners. And, like, that was such a stupid idea, in my opinion. Paul Heyman made sense because Paul Heyman was ECW. Like, you know, that made sense. But, you know, Stephanie McMahon and, and Shane McMahon owning WCW, like, that was so stupid. And... You know, just make make it make sense, you know, like and have Ric Flair be like the leader, you know. Ric Flair would come in, you know, you know, all right, here's what we're gonna do. Like, you know, just have him be Ric Flair. Like, you know, that stuff would have been great. And then yeah, maybe at the end of that have what they did with the uh Survivor Series two thousand one where it was like the winner takes all and then just kinda ended and then divvy up the, the superstars you know but yeah i mean just have it make sense you know and it, it wouldn't have to be like wwf versus w like again if undertaker and sting were both baby faces just have a baby face match that's what the fans would want to see who cares about the story just have sting come out point his bad undertaker says i just want i just want to wrestle you no no gimmick, no storyline, no nothing. Just man to man. Let's go out there. May the best man win, and that's it. Like that that makes sense to me. Not the whole stupid story that we ended up getting for six about six months. You know, not that crap. But good question. Um moving on. Uh what are your thoughts about the Batman versus Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles animated movie that's coming out? Someone and one of the previous parts that already asked me, I'm again, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, it looks like it could be a lot of fun. I hope it's good and successful, and maybe get some more. That would be fun as well. Um, number three, it's been so long since we had another heavy metal movie. Um, there had been talks of a remake, but nothing came out of it. Personally, I'd love to see it turned into an adult animated anthology series using different styles of animation. But I'm not sure if even that would be successful over here. 
due to the bullshit political environment that we live in now. Um, would a heavy metal animated uh, series be more successful in places like Japan and Europe? Um, definitely Japan. Europe probably as well. Um, I don't think there needs to be anything more than what we have. I think what we have is good enough. Um, but, you know, if something like that were to happen, yeah, it would not... I don't think it would go over that well here in the United States. Um, but overseas, I think it would do better. But thank you, Harvey, for sending in your questions. We're moving on now to uh, J. Hanger Sultan, who sent in two questions. Um, number one is your top favorite action films. Well, um, you know, there's a lot. If I had to, you know, we're just going to pick five. And this is really no in particular order. Um, Enter the Dragon, Last Action Hero, Demolition Man, Time Cop, and Out for Justice. That's, that's like a top five for me. Um, I, and again, I could I could sit here all day and talk about, you know, what my favorite action films are, you know, definitely something I could talk about all day. And the second question is, would you do a Jackie Chan movie marathon, uh, reviews? Yeah. Uh, that's something I want to do one day. There's still, uh, quite a few Jackie Chan films I need to see. And, uh, one, again, one day I would like to, uh, review his movies. I don't know if I'll review all of them. Um, maybe just, the ones that I like and some of the bigger ones, but I mean, the guy's been in a million movies and I don't even remember. I think the last Jackie Chan movie that I really liked was Chinese Zodiac and skip trace were the last two that I liked. Um, ever since like police, new police story back in 2004, I really haven't followed Jackie's career. A lot of the stuff that he's done, uh, doesn't look interesting to me, but I did see, you know, again, Chinese Zodiac and Skip Trace, I really liked. I liked him in The Foreigner, but the rest of the movie was kind of lousy. Um, you know, if the movie focused more on him, I think it would have been a lot better. But it just got way too complicated and everything. But that one I, I would probably do a review for. Because I like Jackie in the movie, but that's about it. <laughs> so thank you for those two questions. We're moving on now to ten questions from... I'm sorry my nose is itching. That's not the name of the, the person. Um, Austin Wilcutt, uh, number one, what are your thoughts <clears throat> on the eight Saw films? Um, I've only ever seen the first three, and I kind of quit after that. I kind of got tired of, of the gimmick, got <clears throat> tired of the shtick of the Saw films. Um, the first one I really liked, two I thought was a good follow-up, and three I liked as well. But again, after that, I lost interest. I, I stopped watching them I stopped caring about them and um you know it's hard to believe that there's eight of them now um but I've just have no interest in I really have no interest in in checking out the rest of them and you know the the torture porn and and, and those kind of movies I just I, that's not my cup of tea it's really not um and I'm surprised that I sat through the first three to be honest um you know not um they made me sick or anything like it's just that's not my kind of movie i don't like that kind of horror that's not horror to me that's just blood and guts and you know there's no substance to that kind of stuff in my opinion i like slasher movies and psychological stuff and ghost stories and haunted house movies and monster movies and stuff like that um you know the hostels and and those those type of movies i'm not into those like just not my cup of tea but the first three, you know, the first one I thought was the best. I did I did enjoy that, too. Was a solid sequel, and then I didn't mind three. And then after that, I haven't seen, you know. Uh, number two, do you think there will be a new Star Wars trilogy after this new one wraps up? George Lucas said he wants to do another trilogy, and it's like, why? What is the fucking point now? Like, again, you know, Star Wars, you know... They said, well, this is, you know, we're going to take a break after this and blah, 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 this, that, and the other thing. But they got this TV show coming out and, and whatever. And, you know, like I said in that video that I did, the, the Star Wars one, you know, I'm just so fucking sick and tired of Star Wars. I'm tired of hearing about it. I'm tired of seeing it plastered everywhere. And it's just enough. I hope after this last one, there's not another goddamn fucking Star Wars movie ever because I'm tired 
of seeing it. I'm tired of people hyping it up. I'm tired of seeing Star Wars shit plastered everywhere. It's it's really annoying, and I'm sick of it. And everyone's like, well, you know, you don't give it a chance and this and that. Again, I've been saying it since the beginning of my YouTube years and all that. It's about preference. It's about what you prefer to watch. It has nothing to do with what's cool and what's popular and this, that, and the other thing. Like fucking Game of Thrones. I have never seen an episode of Game of Thrones. I don't care that there's this, you know, this thing going around. It's like, well, people that say I don't watch Game of Thrones is like saying I'm a vegan. That doesn't make any goddamn fucking sense whatsoever. Um, yeah, you know, it's just, I'm, I'm tired of it. I hope, no. I hope there's no more goddamn fucking Star Wars movies. I'm sure there will be. I'm sure in about 10 years, they'll fucking remake all this shit and start over again. But whatever. I just, I, I don't fucking care. Uh, you know, I, again, I have what I need. I have the original movies in the, you know, unaltered original versions on Blu-ray with special features. That's all that I, I, I own, and that's all that I fucking care about. And that's it. And no one can change my mind. That's Nothing about Star Wars can change my mind. Fuck Star Wars. I've been saying it for a while now. Uh, number three, do you think Disney will implode and destroy itself by getting too, bi too big of a corporation or pandering to... Uh, I think social... Yeah, social politics that alienate fans of certain franchises. It's going to happen eventually. Disney, I think, is going to get too big too quickly, and they're going to fucking just blow up. It's going to blow up really bad, and it's going to it's gonna get fucked up, in my opinion. It's going to get really fucked up. But luckily, um, Disney only really cares about four things. They care about Star Wars. They care about Marvel. They care about Frozen, and they care about turning their older animated movies into live action films. Everything else is okay. You know, I, I don't have to worry about everything else, but the shit that I just mentioned is shit that I don't care about. Again, fuck Star Wars. I'm, I'm so over Star Wars. I've been over Star Wars ever since, you know, Revenge of the Shit came out. Um, you know, pretty much, you know, I, my, it's funny because the other day, the other night, me and my brother were watching TV and they showed a spot for Avengers Infinity War and he went off on like a five minute tangent. He's like, I'm so goddamn fucking sick and tired of these superhero movies. He's like, just stop. He basically does what I do. Excuse me. And I agree. I am so goddamn done with Marvel and DC and all this shit. Just stop. No more. Frozen, I've never seen Frozen. I don't give a fuck about Frozen. I think Frozen 2, Chuck Norris should come out in the beginning and blow up the fucking world and the end. It'd be a great movie. Um, and these live action, basically, remakes, quote unquote, of the animated shit, I don't care about either. I will watch the animated stuff because that's what I like. But, yeah, Disney's going to get too big. They're going to keep pumping, especially with this Disney app shit. Like, it's going to get really, really big, and there's going to be too much, and people are going to lose their goddamn fucking minds and go, and, and go batshit crazy and whatever. But, yeah, you know, uh, Disney's going to keep playing the political game like they always have ever since Disney started, and it's going to get too big with, you know, the four primary franchises or universes or whatever and then the, you know with this app it's going to get even bigger and it's going to be way too much for people to handle and it's going to come crashing down hard it's going to be like the 80s again when disney went through that very dark time in the 80s and they did a lot of darker very good movies though like the black cauldron i love the black cauldron it's one of my favorite disney movies um, it's going to be like that all over again. I, I'm, you know, I, I'd be willing to put some money on it. Um, Disney's going to get shitty again like that. It's going to get real fucking ugly real quick, in my opinion. Just watch. It's happened before. It'll happen again. It's, it's History repeats itself because people are stupid. So there you go. Anyway, uh, number four. Who is the worst actor and actress 
and director working in Hollywood today? Who do you despise the most? I mean, collectively, I, I hate them all. I really do. Like, you know, I'm just so sick of all these filmmakers and these actors and these directors and everyone um, just sharing their opinions like their fucking opinion matters, whether it's about politics or, uh, you know, uh, social justice shit or, or whatever the fuck, you know. Just so sick of it. I'm sick of, of actors and actresses just being in your face all the time. You know, because of social media and the way that everything is now, it's like they're literally everywhere. You can't get on Facebook or Twitter or whatever social media you use or, or whatever we're talking about here without seeing these fucking people pop up everywhere. And it's getting annoying. I'm tired of seeing all these people everywhere. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm pretty much fed up with all of them. There's not one specific person that I, I, I despise the most or I hate. I mean, it's, um, or I think is the worst. It's, I'm just, I'm tired of, of, of all of them. I really am, you know, between, you know, using examples here between Paul Fig getting on Twitter and, you know, cussing people out and putting people on blast because they didn't fucking like Ghostbusters between Brie Larson saying that, you know, white white men can't go see Captain Marvel because it's not for it's not for them. We didn't make this movie for them. Um, to her wanting, you know, uh, a, a, a diverse group of people interviewing her for her movies, you know, to, you know, now I read today that Charlize Theron's kid is transgender and, you know, she wonders why she's single and all this other fucking hoopla, like, you know, Lady Gaga, you know, oh, her and Bradley Cooper are having an affair, and then, who really fucking cares? Like, why do people get so wrapped up around goddamn fucking Hollywood and all these fake-ass celebrities, all these bullshit-ass people? Why are, are, are they on such a fucking high pedestal that people have nothing better to do than wonder what they're doing, you know, more so than their own children and all this other shit. You know, people are like, well, you know, you like Stallone and Van Damme and this and that. But first of all, those guys aren't in your goddamn face with everything that they do. You know, do some of them take part in social media? Yeah. I love Van Damme because Van Damme's always... always you know, posting pictures of uh, fans that he met or he's in the gym working out and he posts a video and, you know, uh, you know, I love Jean-Claude Van, D you know, S Stallone. For a while, Stallone was, you know, there was a, he posted a video of him like rapping in his car and, you know, goofing around with his kids. Like, okay, that's shit that I'll look at. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, blowing up shit with his tank. And quoting his old movies, like, okay, that's entertaining, that's cool. Not, you know, right here and in your face and, oh my god, she slept with him and then she fucked him and then she boned her and her kids, 87 genders, and she don't like white men, but she's white, which makes no fucking sense. And, you know, all this pointless fucking bullshit. I'm just so tired of everyone. I really am. Like, I'm I'm just so sick and tired of every goddamn person in Hollywood. Even, you know, again, uh, people that I think are good actors or good directors or whatever. You know, I'm just tired of them just always being the center of attention. And them, you know, being sexualized by the media and all this other bullshit. It makes me want to take this hatchet that I have sitting off camera and chop this fucking house into pieces because it's that goddamn sickening. I don't understand how people can just get so fucking wrapped up in this shit. It's annoying. It's really fucking annoying. I, I hate all of it. I really do. And, you know, one day I think it would be cool if, if I became an actor professionally. But, you know, I don't know because I just hate Hollywood. I hate the Hollywood system. And I just am so anti-Hollywood. It's disgusting what these people do and how these people behave. And it's like, why the fuck would I want to be a part of that for, you know, for whatever the cost? Like, I'm a normal fucking person. Why would I want to change everything about me just to be in some movies? 
you know, whatever. I know that was very long-winded and that was a tangent, and I hope that that was an answer that satisfied you, but I'm just, I, I just so goddamn tired of it. I really am. It, it's, it's disgusting, you know. It's like every goddamn second of the day, you turn on the television or you look at your phone and these fucking people are there and you just hate it. I just fucking hate it. I'm sorry. I need a drink now. I definitely need a drink. <laughs> After that. It's getting a little warm in here. Yeah. <laughs> I have to. I'm wearing a Macho Man shirt. And the belt. I have to, you know. Anyway, number five. Uh, do you think the media wants to fear monger everything and wanting everyone uh, to live in a constant state of fear just for ratings or something more sinister? It's both. You know, I just recently did it. You know, again, I recently did a video about people are always afraid. Like, why? Why are people so fearful of whatever the fuck they're fearful of? It's really annoying. And it, 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 it's stupid. Like, it's really stupid. Like, people just want to be afraid and, you know, you know, oh my, what, what, oh, he did, oh God, you know, this guy was filming me at Walmart and, uh, da, 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 da. like, you know, and, and, and it's, 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 yeah, it's the media and it's social media and it's all this, again, like I just went off on this tangent, I guess I'm going to go off on another tangent, but people like when I do that, so... I'm going to keep doing it. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like, why? Like, and I think a lot of this shit is fucking bullshit. I think a lot of it is, is, is made up by people just to get a rise and get fucking attention. Like, you know, all this shit about, you know, there's guy at Walmart tried to lure me into sex trafficking. Like, what the fuck? Like, really? Like, every time you go to Walmart, you think some creepazoid is going to, you know, suck you into human trafficking? No, like, there's no statistically way possible for this to happen every fucking time someone goes to Walmart. There's no goddamn way that this could be statistically possible. I want the fucking proof for that. You know, if I was on Joe Rogan, I would get Jamie to pull it up, you know, um, for those that watch Joe Rogan. And I love Joe Rogan because he's smart, he's funny, he doesn't fuck around. He's got great guests on there that are interesting people, not some bullshit fucking actor promoting their latest movie. Um, anyway, but that's another topic for another day. But, you know, yeah, I it, 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 it's to get fucking ratings and it's to, to make people fucking, you know, fucked up in the head or emotionally or whatever. And it's just to get people... To always be on the edge of their seat and be tense and and just you know want to want to cause drama and commotion and all this other fucking bullshit. Like again, with the previous question, it, it's it's all bullshit. Like there's no fucking way possible that all this shit that people are afraid of is actually real. It's fucking made up. Like let's get real here. Like this is America. Shit, you know, does shit like this happen? Yeah, but not every goddamn second of every goddamn day. Easter Sunday, and I'm taking the Lord's name in vain, I know. But it just, this shit, just like the last question, it just fucking pisses me off so much that every time you get on social media, there's some bullshit fucking post that someone shared about some goddamn possible child abduction or some fucking sex trafficking operation going on in bumfuck Arkansas at Walmart. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, there's no fucking way that all this shit is real. I know what people are probably thinking whether they watch this. You're on fucking drugs. That's the thing. I've, I've never done a single drug in my life. I just fucking think for myself and I think outside the box and I just, you know... I have a very low tolerance for bullshit. And when I smell bullshit, I get pissed about it. And I fucking rant and rave about it because I'm so sick and tired 
of the way that shit is and the way that people live in fucking fear constantly. Like, they're afraid that they're going to open their door to check the mail and a fucking drive-by shooting is going to happen, specifically targeting them. It's fucking retarded. But yeah, to answer your question... I think it's for ratings, and I think it's for something more sinister. It's both of them. Because people have to have some kind of fucking bullshit to cling to. Anyway, that's the second tangent, and I'm going to take another drink. Because I'm tired. <laughs> I need one to calm me down. Luckily, the next couple of questions are movie-related, and they're, <laughs> they're positive ones, so I can calm down and not risk the fucking you know, stress of a heart attack or something. drinking water too so at least I'm hydrated anyway moving on um, number six do you think the Highlander sequels are as bad as everyone um, makes them out to be and which alternate versions of these films do you like the best interesting question um, being a huge Highlander fan um, I don't think the sequel the sequels are definitely not as bad as everyone makes them out to be. They no, there's no nowhere near. Um, Highlander two, I think, got in a very uh, unfortunate situation where the movie, first of all, completely diverted everything that the first one did. You know, I really. The, the theatrical cut is a bad movie. I will say that. It, it, it's poorly edited. I fucking hate the concept of the Immortals uh, being aliens. Like, that was one of the... I, I would love to know who came up with that idea. That is one of the dumbest explanations in a sequel I've, I've ever heard. Um, the Renegade version and the special edition I do like because they completely redid the movie... It makes sense now. I liked how they slightly rectified it by making the Immortals from a distant past. That kind of made more sense as, you know, instead of aliens. Um, they should have just stuck with the idea of the first one where the Immortals were just simply immortal. There was no explanation as to why they were immortal, but they were part of this race and they had to fight till there was one left. Like, that made complete sense. It was perfect, the first movie. Um, but I don't think, you know, Highlander 2 is the worst movie ever made. No, far from it. There's been plenty of other sequels out there that are definitely a lot worse than Highlander 2. I think that the reason why Highlander 2 gets that stigma is because of the unfortunate situation that it was put in to where the movie was taken away from everyone involved with it by the insurance company or the bonding company or something like that. And they saw fit to do what they wanted with it. They didn't fucking care about the movie. They dumped it in theaters and it didn't make any money. And then luckily a couple of years later, when those rights expired and they reverted back, they went back and they did the movie their way because it was much better. Um, and I like the they changed the effect. Like they made the shield blue instead of that weird red, orange looking shit. Like, you know. The, the Renegade version, which is the director's cut, essentially, and then the uh, when the special edition came out, they made some a couple of changes and they updated the effects and everything. That's how you do it. That, that was done right. Those are actually... Both versions are, I think, solid. They're very fun. Sean Connery gets to come back and be a ham bone. Um, you know, those... Those are, I really like that version. It, it made sense. I like the Blade Runner look, and um, you know, I like that really cool sword that he had with the extension and everything. Like Highlander Two has a lot of good stuff in it. Um, the theatrical cut just wasn't a good movie. It just you know, they they didn't care, and then they cut it to shit, and it is shit. That version, um, nowhere near as bad as, as the worst movie of all time. Um, three was basically a remake of the first movie. I do like it. Um, you know, I like Mario Van Peoples as the bad guy. I like Chris Lambert in the film. I like some of the action, the fights in it. Um, but it's basically a remake of the first movie. Like, let's not get, you know, let's not fool ourselves here. And let's be honest, it's, it's a remake of part one. 
Um, but I do like it for what it is. It's a it's a fun little, you know, if, if you kind of look at it as its own thing, not as a sequel, it, it it it's fun. You know, it's a fun little movie. And Endgame, I think, is the best sequel. I really like it. I like how they brought Duncan and Connor together. I liked how Connor was this very tragic, fucked up figure and went through all this shit in his life and. You know, there was some really good acting there from Chris Lambert. And I, I think Christopher Lambert is an extremely underrated actor. I've always enjoyed his work. Um, you know, I'd love to meet the guy one day. But I don't, you know, Endgame, the theatrical curtain, ugh, I can't talk. The theatrical version, you know, again, they just cut the movie to shit. The, uh, the DV, well, every home video version is the producer's cut. That's a much better movie, you know, than the theatrical version. But no. Uh, they are not anywhere near as bad as, as the general consensus is. The only one that I think sucks is the last one, The Source, because, again, it took everything that you liked about uh, the, the the saga and, and destroyed it. They came up with this stupid fucking concept of, like, basically the Fountain of Youth for Immortals, and it killed off Joe Dawson, the music was atrocious the 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 demon looking the thing looked like a duck like it was stupid it's such a bad movie that movie sucks that one actually sucks um but two three and four are not as bad as people say uh and in terms of my alternate versions which ones i like uh again both alternate versions of highlander 2 i think are good it's a, they're good. That's a good sequel. Those versions, I, I enjoy those. Um, the director's cut of three, I, I think it adds some nudity. It adds some more nudity and a little bit more violence. That's okay, um, you know. And the producer's cut of Endgame, I really like because it felt like a complete movie. Uh, the theatrical version cut a lot of the story out. A lot of shit doesn't make sense in that version. But the producer's cut does because it's like, oh, well, you know, we have story in this one. And that's the problem. I think Highlander, uh, God, the sequels at least, you know, people just kind of, the producers or the the money maker, the, the people with the money, I don't know, just kind of shrugged them off and was like, whatever, make whatever, and, and that's it. Yeah, and they really didn't care. But no, they're definitely not as bad as most people say. Again, there is far worse sequels out there and far worse just one-off movies out there uh, that I would take take the take the taco as worse sequels over Highlander 2, 3, and 4, definitely. The only one that actually was shitty was the last one, The Source. Horrible movie. Um, anyway, um, number seven, what are your thoughts on Wesley Snipes coming back as Blade in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? I don't really know how that's going to work out, to be honest. Like, I don't know. Um, I, if it was like a standalone movie or something, yeah, I would like to see Blade on his own. But again, how are they going to incorporate that into the already, you know, they're getting ready to kind of stop doing the cinematic universe with this, you know, end game business. So I don't know how it's going to fit into the other movies, but if he wants to come back again as blade in a one-off movie or its own separate thing. Yeah. That I would actually see. I love the first two blade movies. Blade three sucks because a big part of it was Wesley Snipes as much as we don't want to admit it, but Wesley Snipes had a lot to do with that movie being the way that it is. Um, and some other things, but you know, if again, if it was if it was like a its own thing, like a Netflix series, a Blade, you know, another Blade TV series with Wesley Snipes as Blade, I would watch that. Or if it was like a a one shot movie just to do one, I'll watch that. But that's about it. Um, again, I don't know how it's gonna fit into all the other stuff out there, but whatever. Number eight, which Mortal Kombat game do you like the best, and what are the worst Mortal Kombat home ports, in your opinion? Um, Mortal Kombat 2, again, I, I know people are like, well, everyone says that, but to me, like, it's the personal attachment that you have to the game. 
Um, I love Mortal Kombat too. I liked how they brought back all the pretty much all the characters from the first one except Kano and Sonya. Um, and they added Reptile as a actual character. They redesigned some of the looks. I like the bosses. I like the story more. The music is great. You know, I think Mortal Kombat 2 is the superior game in that original, in the original Mortal Kombat's, the first four games. Um, you know, well, five if you count Mortal Kombat Trilogy. But um, Mortal Kombat 2 has always been my favorite, no matter what version. I grew up playing the Sega Genesis version because my neighbor had it and I always borrowed it from them and I always played in the arcades. Uh, I love it. It's my favorite. You know, I love the levels and everything. Um, and the worst home port, uh, I know you mentioned something about the Game Boy versions. Well, it was the Game Boy. You know, I'm not, I played Mortal Kombat 2 and 3 for the Game Boy. I remember renting them from the video store and getting really frustrated with them as a kid, but it is what it is. Um, you know, uh, the Super Nintendo port for the first game is horrible because they took out all the blood. And replaced it with sweat. Like, it's just... I would say that's the worst offense. I mean, uh, it's definitely, from a technological standpoint, superior to the Sega, except for the Sega CD, uh, the Sega Genesis port because Super Nintendo. But I would say that's the worst one because it took away all the fatalities, all the blood. Like, it was, it was a bad move on Nintendo's part. Which, Mortal Kombat 2, they had all the blood and guts in it. So there you go. Uh, number 9. What films are you looking forward to in 2020? I don't even know what's coming out next year. Let's take a quick look-see here. Um, yeah, again, I don't even know. Couldn't even tell you any movie that's coming out next year. But I'm, I'm going to look here. Doing a Grudge remake. Didn't we already have one? Okay, fuck that. Um, they're doing another Dr. Doolittle. Okay, I, I know. Bad Boys for Life. Yeah, I definitely want to see that when it comes out. That's something I look forward to seeing very much. I think it'll be good, hopefully. Um, they're doing like another... Hansel and Gretel film, whatever. Birds of Prey, I really don't have an interest in. The Kingsman 3, yeah, I, I actually haven't seen the first two, but I, I want to, and I, I look forward to the third one. Um, Bloodshot, not really. They're doing a Fantasy Island movie? I didn't know that. Okay, Godzilla vs. King Kong, definitely not. Um... Because I didn't like the new Godzilla film. They're doing a Mulan. Oh, God. A live-action Mulan. Jason Scott Lee's going to be in it. Cool. Doing a Snake Eyes movie? I didn't know that. Bond. I, I do want to see the new Bond. Looking forward to that. They're doing a sequel to Escape Room. I still need to see the first one. Legally Bond 3. Now I'll pass on that. Fast and the Furious 9. I'll probably pass on that. I really don't have an interest. The Candyman remake. What I didn't even know. Top Gun 2. Fuck no. I don't care about Top Gun 2. Minions 2. Not really. Ghostbusters 3. No. A Bob's Burgers movie? Jungle Cruise. No. Morpheus. Morphe, Mor, Morbius. No. Coming to America 2. No. Bill and Ted 3. Not really. Monster Hunter? No. Conjuring 3? No. Oh, The Sopranos prequel movie, Newark? Fuck yes. That's that's the one. I want to see that. They're doing a Micronauts movie? Didn't even know that. Clifford the Big Red Dog movie? Another Dune? They're doing another Dune movie. Avatar 2 can lick my asshole. So, Bad Boys for Life and Newark are the, the Sopranos prequel. Those are the two that I'm looking forward to the most. Yeah. So that's it for those two. And the last question from Austin and also the last question in this part. Uh, what are your life goals now that you've left the military? Uh, interesting question. Um, you know, 
there's a lot of things I want to do in life, and that's a big reason why I got out. Can't really do the things I want to do if I'm in the military. Um, but the, the, the big stuff right now is, you know, letting my ankle heal, you know, um, getting there. And, you know, want to want to start working, you know, work a, a government security job, make some good money and, and move into other areas, maybe do some some private stuff like bodyguarding or, you know, private protection stuff, you know, you know, there's, there's plenty of opportunities for that, for private security and making good money. Um, I want to, you know, get my ass in shape before I head into the, to the private stuff, you know, working for the government's not a big deal with that, but you know, if, if someone is going to, if, if someone is going to take me serious as like a bodyguard or something, I need to get in shape and get some muscle on me and, and get back into martial arts and, uh, do some more weapons training and, and just, you know, take myself more seriously. And yeah, martial arts, I definitely want to get back into that full time. And, um, maybe if I get good enough, maybe compete, not like MMA type stuff, but maybe some full contact and go from there, like kickboxing or something like that. I, I would like to maybe do that one day. Um, and, uh, yeah, just, you know, enjoy life and get out there and, you know, go to concerts and go to these shows and conventions and just enjoy life, you know, stop being lazy, which I was before the army and, you know, just do the things I want to do and not have anything stop me, you know, but thank you Austin for all the questions. I know we went on some tangents there, but that's the fun thing about these videos is people ask questions. I like to give the best answers I can possibly give. I hope that you guys once again had a good Easter Hope that you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.